right, hello again. Let's make a second greeting card. All right, so I'm going to show you how I get this prepped. So here is a greeting card. This is how they come. All right, and then they have this crease here in the middle. And, and basically, both sides are the same, but there is a way the crease folds. And this is going to fold in like this. Okay, and this will be the front. You see the broken edge here, and the other side has a nice clean edge. So this is going to be the front. And then I have a piece of pastel mat, any thick piece of paper, even a thin cardboard would work. And I cut my drawing boards behind it and then I leave a gap here. So I, after I fold it, I just simply slide it in, fold it down, and then we take some tape. And this is the artist tape. It looks basically masking tape, except that there's not enough or not as much tackiness to it. So it's easier to pull off won't rip the paper, but towards this edge here, I'm going to tape that down. <clears throat> and then the other side as well. Okay, I push it down, tape it down. There we go. There, now we get a nice surface. So three by five greeting card. And here is a reference photo for this one. This is uh, Cannon Beach. Um, haystack rock very famous part very crowded part too of the Oregon coast a lot of people go here it's very famous you saw it in the movie Goonies probably and um, a lot of people go here Cannon Beach itself is a nice coastal town very cute and quaint but again during the summer very crowded I recommend going during the weekday and getting there early okay All right, so let's get started. Let's get started on the sky. We'll kind of first figure out where the horizon is first. So let's see, sky is that nice sky blue color. So I'm gonna go with uh, this one. Okay, and just start scrubbing in some color into it. So that top part is just a sky color. Okay. Um, I am going to get a light gray right here. So I'm going to get that sky blue color. You can see what color that is here compared to. Okay. So that was up here. And then I'm using a f just a flat flat medium gray not dark just right in the middle and I'm going to define a distant um, is it like a distant mountain back here All right and it comes down to like right there on the paper okay And then um, Haystack Rock is going to be right here, about here. So let's get, um, I'm going to use this Cocoa Brown. This is a gray, it's a Neo Pastel, the brand, and it's called Cocoa. It looks like hot cocoa or like hot chocolate. Definitely brown, but a really um, gray brown. And we're going to define Haystack Rock with this, with this stick right here. So there's my distant hill. Um, there's a part of the rock where it's right there. Okay, it's just a general shape. Um, kind of goes up like that. Which are more like it's a really steep part right there. And then there's another little kind of pyramid looking part of it right next to it. All right. It looks like a haystack. That's why it's called Haystack Rock. You see, I'm just kind of scrubbing the color 
with the brush we can kind of define the shape easier and over here there's another part that's kind of way off over here there all right let's define the um, the horizon where basically the ocean meets the sky and it's basically right here make sure that's going straight a blue Prussian blue to put in the color of the ocean water and I am going to put a little green into it um, that green though. I think I want deeper, maybe maybe this one right here. Just a little bit of that into it. Spread that in there. Because the Oregon coast is kind of this kind of a deep blue, kind of greenish, dark water. Okay. All right, so I got that going. Now, as the sky meets the water, it gets really atmospheric, not so blue. So I was thinking of using this khaki gray for that. It's a neo-pastel. I'm just going to um, kind of get this area, and we're going to go back to that sky blue. So it's mixed in with the sky blue. Transition this khaki color into the blue a little bit towards the bottom there. All right, and then our, our distant mountains kind of disappearing, so I'm going to bring him back. Just kind of put a little bit more into it. Right, then we got the beach. So the beach, I was going to use this kind of a cocoa color again that I used on Haystack Rockwoods. You can use that same here and define the beach, the sand. Okay, this will be um, reflection of the wet sand here. But uh, this part's kind of dry, so it's just a darker shade and I'm going to take some of that khaki and go over it it's not so dark okay all right and then right here we have this lavender color which is basically a reflection of the sky the wet sand so we're going to put that right here, right between the color of the ocean water and then the sand. You get the shallow part of the wave, the wake, and it reflects a lot of the sky. Now with the first layer here, you can really just scrub in a lot of different colors and, and, and then just blend it out and then just keep going with more layers to kind of correct whatever you know mistake that you might have made. But right here, there's a reflection of haystack rock as it reflects into the wet sand part. So I want to put a little bit of indication there. 
of that. Okay, this will make sense when I start blending it out. You'll, it'll start coming together. And then um, in the background there, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of a blue to this gray. And just kinda push that back with a little bit of blue. And then, um, now there's shadow parts of the rock. Like this whole part is really dark. So I'm gonna take a Prussian blue and just make that dark. Same with the part here, a little dark. Same with the edge on this part of the rock that we'll recreate over here. And then there's just dimension to haystack rock itself. to rough kind of looking at where those shadows are here on the reference picture and just kind of rough rough it out here on the on the greeting card and on the paper here all right let's start um, let's start blending this out so again we're gonna go with uh, my little hog brush and terp from the last session this will last literally for months, this little part, this little amount here. That'll last for a long time. Right, and you just really just put a little bit in there. Shake off the excess. We'll start up here in the sky and just kind of work it back and forth. And boy, that turp really cuts into the oil pastel, makes this whole thing so easy. All right, and now I'm kind of more dry brushing as I go. Okay, we need a little bit more. It's starting to get too dry. All right. There we go. Now I could get a smaller, you know, brush size to help me kind of work in through these areas, but I don't think I'll need to. I'm kind of just, just being careful. But feel free to get a smaller brush if you need a little bit more control. I know that I'm going to go here with a second layer. So I'm really, my mind here is really about just covering this paper up right now. There we go. Just kind of work that sky in. Let's make a little bit more, a little bit more turp. We'll start in the water here. I gotta really flatten out this water, try to make it flat across as best as I can without using a straight edge. It'll be a little off, but we might be able to correct it once we get past this layer. Just kind of work it down. This is the color of the water. It looks really dark as it compared to my reference picture, but don't worry, we'll fix that up. I like the green that I added. It's got a nice tone to it.
there's that nice cocoa hot chocolate type of color it's neo pastel so it's really soft all right a little bit more turp You'll feel it dry out and it'll definitely, you'll know when to add turp. It'll just feel dry. The color won't spread as easy. But try to try to dry it out as, as much as you can because you can get some nice effects with the dry brush. Just use the same brush through the whole scene. It's okay if the colors mix into each other and get a little dirty. Totally normal. All right, now you notice I haven't touched any of the uh, rocks here, but we're gonna go ahead and start on that. A little bit more turp. We'll start on the back one here. The distant mountain. So Cannon Beach is a really popular part of the Oregon coast. A lot of people go there, travel, you know, weekends. So it's very crowded, but it is a cute little town. And of course you want to live there. Real estate's really expensive in Cannon Beach compared to the other communities around it. I prefer more central a little bit south of Cannon Beach, like Newport area and even Lincoln City and Newport and Walport and Yahats and that area, more central part of Oregon coast. It's less people. Cannon Beach can get very crowded, hard to find parking sometimes, but it's a must visit. Definitely recommend seeing it. down there. Okay. And then um, this little part here. little piece here okay now my brush is really dry so the bristles are starting to spread out making it harder to get detail edges there we go maybe it's a little bit more like that okay so let's put the brush down. We're pretty much done with that. And then I'm gonna wait another 10 minutes here because the surface is really wet. And um, this part feels a little bit drier, but up in here it's still pretty wet, especially that water is really wet. So I'm gonna wait about 10 minutes here to dry this up and then I'll be back. All right, we are back. Waited 10 minutes and um, let's see how it feels. So kind of just lightly touch, definitely feels dry. And I'm getting the color up, that's okay. Feels a little bit dry and chalky, which is what I like. All right, so we're ready to go. <clears throat> All right, so let's start up in the sky. Just, um, just go same right over the top of that. Put a little of that color into it again. Okay, real easy. And then um, as we come down, we're gonna put in a little bit of this khaki, khaki gray color here. Kind of that, uh, 
atmospheric pollution, I guess. Really, it's what it is. Um, there we go. Okay, and if it gets too dark, like I created it too dark right there, I can just take the same sky color and just lighten it up. Now work your way through the scene. And over here it's a little dirty, so I'm going to kind of put a little bit more sky, kind of clean that up a little. And then the same khaki color, go over it. Very loose, very light on top of that. Right, and if we want to, we can take a stump here. Now, I don't want to use this tip here because it's got that dark Prussian blue on it. So I'm going to flip it to a nice clean tip and just kind of work it in to the edges there. Okay, work those colors together. That khaki and that light blue, just kind of mixing it in here. I think it's still a little bit muddy right there, so I'm going to bring in some more of that blue. There we go, a little bit better. <coughs> All right. You can use these stumps to really define edges of things, like the rocks or buildings or you know, houses or mountains, trees, etc. When you're working up against something else like a sky and you don't want to blend these colors into each other, we want to create a nice clean edge. You can use these stumps for that. They're really helpful for that. You know, this back mountain here, I don't think I'm going to touch. I think I like the way that looks just as is. I don't really need to do anything to that. So I'm just going to go right down into the water and I'm going to take this lavender stick this is a Mungio could be a Van Gogh there's the color right there and we'll start working this up here in the wet sand the reflective part of that sand that's reflecting the sky is right up here and even over here it's really light as it lightens up as it uh, fades back Define where the rock meets the water, kind of. Fade it out. might even take some of the same sky blue up here and bring it down here to really kind of make that horizon back here really just faintly disappear. sand that's reflecting the sky will be right up here in the front. Now there's people in this reference photo. I haven't even thought about them. Not sure if I'm going to put them in. Sometimes I leave the people out because sometimes it's hard to depict people. 
I feel like, you know, if I mess it up, it's going to mess up the whole painting. So, but maybe we can do that. Maybe we can put some people in. It's just going to be really um, simple marks, really. Okay, I need to lighten up this part of the blue ocean water. So, let's go in maybe with this blue. Okay. Just lighten up. That's so dark here. Just grab that in over the top of that. And I'm going to take this stump down here. Just trying to wipe a little bit of excess blue off the tip of it before I go in. And we'll just kind of blend that into it. That blue we just put in, we're just going to blend that in. <clears throat> I want to make sure my water line is going straight. It looks pretty good. Okay, and we'll bring this white, uh, this light sky blue, and just, just clean up that edge here a little bit better. Got a nice sunny day on the coast here. So we have no cloud cover, which is nice. Because we get a lot of that here in the Pacific Northwest, especially this year. It's been a really cloudy, really wet year for us. When you go to Oregon coast, it's fairly, it's overcast quite a bit actually. Best times to go, I think, are September and get the best clear skies and during September, October even, maybe late August. All right, keep going. I'm kind of just lightening it up here and there. You can almost create like waves by doing this, it's just kind of a light, dark, light, dark transition. And then down here, just all this color here. All right, now let's work, keep going in the sand. So sand color is gonna be this khaki, this khaki gray. And might have to even lighten up, might even go with a lighter gray. Um, this has a little bit more yellow into it. Yeah, a little bit lighter. All right, so we can create like sand. Now, as the sand gets closer to the water, it gets darker in color because it's wet sand. Wet sand is darker than dry sand, right? We all know that. Okay, I'm trying to create like, you know, a texture within the sand, like, like it's been walked on. Right, so I'm just kind of quick dabbing that in there. And then that chocolate cocoa, one of my favorite sticks here, this Neo Pastel, this cocoa color. It's this one right here. This will be my wet sand area. So put in a little edge there. Right where that blue comes in. It's darker right here. There's a reflection of haystack rock 
right into the water and it starts like you can start seeing it here it gets darker so very loose that reflection even this one here is reflected okay you can't really see the reflection in this part of the ocean water it's really right here in the shallow water here that you see this all right and then take the stump and um, kind of push that into the paper, very loose. Okay. That's about right. All right, now, very good. Okay, so let's add in, I want to add a little bit more of the sky color into this foreground here to kind of just help that area a little bit more. Right, and you can use the same sky color to define some distant um, waves that are crashing. Right, a little bit of movement back in there. All right, values are important, so as these waves, these crashing waves get closer to us, the viewer, they're going to get lighter in value, meaning they're going to get brighter. But the distant ones, we can kind of just use that same sky color, kind of, kind of get an indication of some breaking water back in there. Okay. All right, and then as we get closer here, we get a different gray, a lighter gray. And create an indication of a wave that's closer to viewer. that okay pretty cool right you can see the um, reflection of that wet sand so I think I'm gonna take the same cocoa I think I'm gonna do this actually I'm gonna go with a blue I'm, I'm gonna define a little bit more detail here in the front part where I can see in the picture um, contrast in certain areas. There's my stump. Let's get some white and really add some highlights here. Some of these waves here are closer to us or brighter, stronger value. The white's nice, it's uh, nice and bright. Okay, pretty cool, right? All right, remember the distant waves are going to be that nice light blue and then nearer waves brighter marks brighter colors whites etc all right now let's work on haystack rock itself i already like the way it looks so i'm not going to not going to do too much but i want to bring a want to bring some actually i want to bring a little green a little bit of the green here and just work it in very slowly work that green in easily maybe some moss 
here, you know, it's catching Light's catching some of that green on the rock. Okay, and then um, take this khaki color here for highlight. And try to define a little bit more of this rock here, haystack rock. really just catching I'm using this as light the light that's hitting this rock it's a kind of defining with this uh, khaki color stick here <clears throat> All right random places that you see the highlight hit darker shadows in I'm just looking at my reference finding those dark marks coming over to here and just putting it there okay breaking down the picture so I say, oh, it's dark here, so I'm going to make it dark there. All right. And then where's that green? Here's that green. So I use this um, green here. Very subtle green. It's got the gray. Got gray in it. Um, but it's a nice tone and it adds some interesting dimension to the rock, some color. Okay. Haystack rock. Pretty much done. I'm kind of poking around. Question is, do I bring in the people? And I'll show you the people here in a second. I'm going to put some upfront details here. Just kind of really just smashing the end of this stick into it and get a brighter mark. Push it in with the finger. So here's the people. Okay. Let's see the people. Looks like a, an adult and two children. There's my version here. See, I like it, everything, Lena. Everything works perfectly as is. I don't have to add people. So let's try it out. So I think for this, um, I might use graphite just because I have a nice pointy edge. And um, this might be a big mistake, but let's just see what we can do here. Um, really, it's just... Legs. Shadow of the legs. And then there's like a torso ahead. And smaller body. It's that. And let's add some color to them. So maybe this dude's wearing like a blue blue shirt. Should have made a different color probably. But let's add a yellow. See it's such a small scale that it's really hard to get make little details like this. You know what I mean? It's difficult. It's 
almost like an impression of a person really because of the marks. Um, let's try red. Red for the little kid over here. Okay, and then I think I'm just gonna go straight white. Um, where's my white? Must be this one. Or the guy up here. kind of getting lost but I don't know I kind of like it it's interesting there's the people it's hard when you're working on a, such a small I mean look here's the size of my pencil compared to the size of the people you see very small to work with so really they're just kind of just marks and I get a softer lavender that's going to lay on top of this. I'm playing with these shadows here. <clears throat> I don't like the guy. I'm going to have to figure out how to bring him out. Figure out a color that's going to work well here. So he's kind of disappearing, but there we go. I don't want to keep haggling with this thing, you know what I mean? At some point, you just got to like, yeah, I mean, that's good enough. The main thing is the rock, and we have indication of a person right here a little bit of reflection and then another person right here a little bit of reflection right and there's some dude here okay garbage is getting picked up if you can hear the garbage truck out there We're good. Maybe more highlight here on the rock. A haystack rock, maybe a little bit more of a, some bright marks here, here and there. light that comes and hits that side of the rock. All right, I think we're good. I think uh, I'm going to stop here. You know, I keep tweaking that, but I think we're call it good. So there we go. I actually do like the people now. It works. There's the picture. There's the card. All right, let's go ahead and take this tape off right here. Okay, and then we can take the rest of that color and just kind of smush it down in there. Same with this side. Kind of spread that out. There we go. We have Cannon Beach, Haystack Rock. All right, guys, thanks for watching.